Today I would like to discuss mail merge and specifically the step-by-step -step mail merge wizard. To begin we'll go to the tab that says mailings, click on mailings, then go to start mail merge and you'll notice that there's a little down arrow beside that. Click there, go all the way down to the step-by-step -step mail merge wizard. Once you've chosen this you will have a, a new set of menu that opens up to the right hand side. In this, you'll, we're going to do a letter, so I'll click on letter, then go to the bottom where it says next, starting the document. I'm going to use the current document to start with, so the next step I'll do is to select the recipients. Now I'd like to show you how to just type a new list here inside Word, so I'll click on type a new list, and then we will create a new recipient list. Once you strike the words create, there you'll have a new dialog box that pops up that says the new address list. In this new address list, if we'll click on customize columns at the very bottom of the page, then you'll see a list of all of the um, different fields that many people will use. If you wanted to delete a field, then you would just be able to click on that and delete it. So for example, if I wanted to delete the country or the region, I would click there and delete. And yes, I do want to delete that. And I also want to add a couple of things. So I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to add a field that's going to say, um, let's call it time. I'll also add one that says room and maybe one that says speech. You can move these around easily by moving up or down. For example, if I want the speech to go up, you can move them around like that. Once you're sure that you'd like it to be like that, we'll go ahead and click OK. Okay, and to add another new entry, I would just click on the word new entry at the bottom and have a new place to type. So I've taken the time to um, input two new entries, so we have a total of three different entries here at this point, and I will click OK after I've keyed all of my records. At this point, you'll have a save address, and in this, we're going to call this particular one your data source. By default, you might notice that these are included under the My Documents, My Data Source. Uh, if you're wanting to save these to a different location, for example, if you're wanting to save it to your flash drive, you would need to, of course, change it at that point. I'm just going to leave it right now under My My uh, Data Sources under My Doc File. And then, of course, you can use your scroll bar here to navigate and make sure that you've got everything typed correctly. One thing that I did forget to do at the very beginning is that I forgot to save my document, so you might want to go ahead and save your letter to begin with. I'll just go do that right quick. Um, I'm just going to save this one as um, speech main doc, so it'll match my other. I notice that this is going into my docs. If you want it to go somewhere else, you would need to tell it to do so. I'm going to start probably about two inches from the top, so I'm going to key in the date as being, press my enter key twice, and then if I would like to have the address block added at that point, I would just click over here to have an insert the formatted address. Once I've clicked here, a new dialog box will open, and then I can choose how I would like for that first name to look. I want to include the company name and the address, etc. And I'm going to click OK. After the address block, I'm going to press my Enter key one time. And then the far right side, I'm going to click on Greeting Line. In the Greeting Line, I don't want it to have a comma following that, so I'm going to choose none because I'll be using open punctuation. Click OK, press my Enter key one time, and um, continue keying the letter. And now I would like to put the name of the speech here. 
So in that instance, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on more items. And I'd like for the speech to go in that particular point. So I'm going to click speech and insert and then click close. Now, of course, notice that I'd also want there to be a space following their speech title. So I'm going to click my space bar once and continue typing. Okay, now I'd like to put in the time. So I'll go to more items, choose time, insert, and close. Once again, I have to press my space bar after time. And then I'd like to put in the room number. And at this point, I want to not space, but I want to put a period after that room number and start a new paragraph. Now, I'd like to personalize this letter by maybe putting or Mr. or Ms. with a space, their last name, insert, close and a comma space. Of course you always have to remember to remove that spacing so that uh, that looks like a single space at the end of your closing lines as you've already learned. I need to now preview this across the bottom where it says preview your letters. Once I've previewed it I will notice that this inside address has those spaces there and I don't want that so I'm going to choose the first three lines of that, not the last one, and remove the space after the paragraph. Oh, looks like I accidentally did it on, that, on the last one too there. Now we are going to look across on this side and preview each one of these letters. Let's take a peek. This is to Miss Allison, dear Miss Harshberger. Here's the name of her paper. This is her time. This is her room. Now, should you find that there is an error in any of this information, please don't correct it inside the letter. Instead, you want to go over here and edit the recipient list that your data source itself is corrected, not just uh, these merged letters. We're going to edit the individual letters. Once I click edit the individual letters, I want to show all of them. Then uh, you'll see that I can look and all of my letters are here right in a row as we're going through.